my success comes from spirituality, not finance. And what happened was when my wife and I started Rich Dad back in 1996, actually, we left the spirituality out. And then the corporate types came in, you know, the MBAs and the accountants and attorneys, and they tried to make it into a business. And I said, no, we're just a bunch of merry men who are kind of like Robin Hood and his gang. Well, I wasn't poor by most people's standards, but I came from a family with a poor attitude, if you know what I mean, because rich, poor, middle class, poverty starts with a fundamental attitude. So I was in Hawaii, I was nine years old. Uh, my father was the head of education, you know, PhD. Very smart man, good guy. And for some reason, we moved across town and I went to a school with rich kids. So this is a little town called Hilo, Hawaii. You know, that's not on the map anywhere, but it is. It's a sugar plantation town. So when I was nine years old, I moved to this rich kids school. And suddenly I realized I was poor because it's relative, you know, as I said, it's all relative. <laughs> and my classmates were mostly white guys. And I was one of the few Asians in the class. And these guys, their fathers owned the banks, they owned the plantations, they owned the car dealerships, they owned the meat packing company, they owned the ranches. And I'm going, how come my dad doesn't own that? So I remember raising my hand when I was nine years old, talking to my, ninth, my fourth grade teacher. I said, you know, when am I gonna learn about money? And she was this woman who should have retired 50 years earlier. <laughs> she was so sick and tired of kids by this time. She says, the love of money is the root of all evil. And I said, what am I in Sunday school? And I was this punky little nine-year-old kid. And she says, we don't teach money at school. I said, why not? And she couldn't answer me. And she got very flustered. She said, sit down, take your seat. And then I got curious. I said, why don't we learn about money? She says, go ask your father. He's, the, he's my boss. So my father was the head of education. PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him, said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and says, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. Trump and I wrote the book together because we both had rich dads and we both are advocates for financial education. And a lot of people just hate him because he's rich or he's obnoxious. He is obnoxious, I'm trying to give it that. But we, we didn't get together for about money because we both had rich dads who taught us how to make money. Our schools don't teach that. Our schools teach almost the exact opposite of that. So anyway, um, how does a guy like me, a little kid with no money, and it wasn't I was poor, we're very middle class, you know. I think my father was making about 20000 a year. And when I graduated from school, from college, I was making 120000 a year six times the amount he made. And I was 21 years old. And he goes, how'd you do that? I said, I didn't go to the same school you went to. <laughs> <laughs> the real, the, the fact of the matter was I created this board game called Cash Flow. Yeah. And I couldn't sell the board game. So I had to write a brochure. And the brochure I wrote was Rich Dad Poor Dad. So Cash Flow came out in 1996. And money, I mean, Rich Dad Poor Dad came out in 97. So the real fact of the matter is cash flow is about accounting. Rich Dad Poor Dad is a book on accounting, income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flow. But if you've ever taken accounting courses, there is no more course more boring than accounting. So to have Rich Dad Poor Dad be a book on accounting and be the number one personal finance book of all times, that says something. And it, it sold the cash flow game and today there's thousands of cash flow clubs all over the world. And the mission statement was people teaching people. You can bypass that school system because the school system will never teach you about money. The school system was designed to teach you to be an employee, which is important, or a doctor or a lawyer, a specialist, but never about money. You see, most teachers in school, they're out of ethics. They teach subjects they, don't, they themselves don't practice. You know, I had the same problem in my MBA program. I got into arguments with the marketing teacher because the guy didn't have a business. 
And then I got into arguments with the uh, accounting teacher because the accounting teacher didn't know accounting. I knew more about accounting than him because I actually worked in bookkeeping in my rich dad's companies. And so I'm not an accountant, but I understand accounting. So that was the end of my school years because I understood what a fake teacher is. A fake teacher is somebody who just wants a job and they'll teach anything. You know, they teach how to shine shoes if you pay them more money. But they really don't know what they're teaching. For example, my calculus teacher, I was at, went to military school in New York and um, I asked the teacher, I said, you know, it's, I'm in my third year of calculus now. It was called, it was called strength of materials. I said, am I ever going to use this stuff? He goes, no. You know, I said, why do you teach it? He says, because I get paid. I said, do you ever use it? He goes, no. And that's why, you know, I, you have to, in life, one of the things I suggest to people, you got to find a real teacher versus a fake teacher. And a fake teacher is somebody who doesn't do what they teach. And a real teacher is doing what they teach every day. So my accountants, my attorneys, they're in it every single day. And that's how I learn, because every day I'm solving problems in my business. So I have, I have accountants and attorneys and bankers and all these people on speed dial because I'm, I'm solving problems with my team. Hmm. How, how, that's how I got smart. You know, people say, well, money is not that important to me. Then if money is not that important to you, money is not important to you. I mean, the, you know what I mean? I don't care about money. The money doesn't care about you. You know, it, the word does become flesh. Or I'll never be rich. Or the favorite one is the rich are greedy. It's the poor that are greedy. You know, if you think about it, because to be rich, you have to give something. You know, you have to, I, I have to produce books and games and I, I purchase real estate, I provide housing provide jobs and all that. That's why I'm rich. But greedy people produce nothing. Oh, no, it's the rich that are greedy. And I'm going, hey, sports fans, you know, you point a finger forward, three are printing backwards. Mm. And so, as we know, there's a big attitude problem against the rich today. You know, I have bad luck, too. I've, I've, I've had f financial crashes. I've had people stab me in the back. But they're all good because I grow from it. That's spirituality. Right. You know, people who are afraid of making mistakes like they teach in school, they don't ever grow because spirituality is there's good and there's bad. There's right and there's wrong. There's up and there's down. Most people only want to be right. They only want to be positive. Well, you can't have that. That's not reality. And the average person, the reason they're poor is they haven't failed. You know, they play it so safe they haven't made any mistakes like they taught in school, that means they don't learn anything. That's why the school system is actually fundamentally corrupt. It's anti-education. Right. Don't make mistakes and don't ask for help. And if I didn't ask for help, I have my accountants, my attorneys, my bankers and all that. You know, I go into business like a rugby team. You know, boom, boom, and we kick butt. But the average guy is standing there, oh, I'm an A student, I'm, gonna, I'm going to do this all on myself. And a, and a bunch of rugby players run you over and you go, well, they're not playing fair. Yeah, well, you're not, you're playing stupid. You should have a team. You should have accountants, attorneys, and bankers and all that stuff. But that's not the game I want to play. I said, then don't play the game. You know, the, the game of business is played with accountants, attorneys, bankers, I hate to say it, politicians. You know, you got to know the game. Fuller talked about the generalized principles. One generalized principle is emergence through emergency. So when you look at the word emergency, the base word is emerge. And what Fuller says, the only way humans evolve is via emergency, crisis. And a big one's coming. And it's gonna be, as we all know, our banks have ripped us off immensely. There's just a bunch of crooks. I don't know how they can live with themselves. But, you know, the bankers rip off trillions and they get bonused in billions. Nobody goes to jail. That's the sickness of our society. So that's why Trump and I write about financial education. It's almost like self-defense. It's almost like taking judo against our own government and our own banking systems and Wall Street. So that's why we're here with, you know, Jim Records and Nomi 
It's kind of self-defense, teaching people what schools will not teach us.